So you don't have to go watch my Tana module uh, video, but let's uh, do this. <clears throat> well, I look fucking literally hideous. I'm so used to filming videos now with like a thousand different clips from like a thousand different things. And it feels very weird to just sit down. And yeah, you have no point. Now I'm like filming one whole video in full like at once. But like also that's what like regular YouTubers do. Should I brush my hair? Should I brush my hair? I should brush my hair. What was that editing? This one's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> like this video. Hey. Why did she laugh at that? It's gonna stress you out. It stresses. No, I, I don't think it will. Me out. I think I'm stressed out. Stop it! Can you tell that I'm stressed out? Yeah, I can. You're repeating yourself. Uh, you are all quirky and weird. And wait a second. I need to go Google something. Normie. Okay, it just uh, gave Tanamongu as a definition. So, I really hate going a long time on YouTube without uploading story times because I feel like that's what oh, I, God. I am at the end of the day. Like, it all, if someone had to ask me what I do in a summarizing form, it all comes back to storytelling to me. Even if you don't like my shitty music, like I'm telling you a story with the song. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like. Everything's like a story. It's like, oh my god, I'm so stretched out. Story to me. So when I go a long time on YouTube without posting story times, I just hate it. Even if the trend dies, I don't really care. Like, I always just want to be telling my story. And obviously, if the trend ever died super far, I would tell it through books. I would just find a way. It's just, it's my thing. I'm a fucking storyteller, okay? And so I get super in my own head and really, like, hate myself <laughs> if I don't have yeah, uh, yeah, it's called uh, being a YouTuber. Upload a story time kind of frequently. And as you can see on my YouTube channel, I have not uploaded a story time in a minute. And so like three weeks ago, I was just super in my own head about it. I was laying in bed one night, like four in the morning, high as fuck. And I literally- Ooh, on what? Medical marijuana? Are you admitting to um, uh, misusing medicinal marijuana? I'm pretty sure that's a felony. I roll over, I turn on the camera, and I film the story time in my bed, and I just talk to you guys for like an hour. I start the story time off with this whole like big preface, just kind of talking about like how I never film sit down videos with like no makeup, how like... <sighs> I tell this long story about how I used to watch Bethany Moda, Mac Barrio 7, a YouTuber back in the day. I watched her for years and randomly she decided to take this break from YouTube and she came online and she was like, I can't just post videos anymore. Like I get super in my own head about every video. I want them to be perfect. Like, and I was talking about how I remembered watching that God, please. as a viewer and being like, I don't understand. Like, I just want videos from you. I just love you. Like, why won't you just post whatever? And so then I go on this whole tangent about how like, I understand that from the the fans perspective as a youtuber and gotten bigger and bigger the Please. more people watching your content and like the more places your videos go and like, when you see your video videos and like times square billboards like you start to think you just start to overthink everything i've definitely been in this place for the last like six months on youtube where yeah you should check this video It'll probably be number one on trending you know Every time I film a video, the first thing I think when I'm done is like, is this a main channel video? Is this good enough? Is this going to get a million views? Are people going to think it's funny? Yeah, nobody thinks you are funny except uh, brain dead two year olds. Like, I always want to be, like, my funniest self. I never want to be any less than that. If any video is not up to my standard, I instantly, am like, put it on my vlog channel or fucking delete it and whatever. And it's, like, as YouTube becomes, like, a business, you just start to take things so much more seriously and you stop sitting down with no makeup and you stop telling stories like this and you want your videos to be getting better and better and blah, blah, blah. And I just go on this whole tangent about... Yeah, it's called being a normal YouTuber. ...this and how I felt like for months I was wanting everything to be perfect Perfect. And like how I refilmed that little Zan story time like a thousand times until it was perfect and like I looked perfect and it still wasn't good enough and then I hated myself for it and then it was fine and like blah blah blah. And so I go on this whole beautifully spoken oh, please stop. In tangent and then I go to tell you this 45 minute story that's one of the craziest stories of my entire life. I've been saving it for years. What? What? So I was originally saving it for like my first life story like book because I thought it was like that good and like telling about how fucked up the industry is and like Illuminati shit that's happened to me and like all these receipts and it was so good and so long and it was kind of about this like company. I 
You need a multi-channel network? I'm going to bet it's a multi-channel network. I'm going to be very brief because I really don't want to get, like, sued. <laughs> You're not going to get sued unless you create a defamatory statement. And then basically I ended up going to this meeting with a bunch of people and one of the people there happened to work for the company and they overheard that my upcoming video had to do with them, I guess, which it it didn't really, but it had to do with like a company that's like associated within their company. It's a mess. You don't care. This makes no sense to you. So I think it does because I be the big brain. Dead memes are good. Um... Uh, so I think uh, she uh, she was in hot water with uh, with a company and the company that the person who who uh, they worked for was the parent company of that company. This person overheard me and they told the higher ups of their company and this company sends this huge fucking email to Jordan with contracts I've signed with their company for other shit, threatening to basically sue the fuck out of me for like millions and millions. Was it a non? Did you sign a non-disclosure agreement? Because if you did, then that's against the law. Did you create a defamatory statement? If so, that's against the law. It's dollars for, like, slander, defamation, like, ex- It wouldn't be- So they sent you a cease and desist letter. Exposing, like, all this shit. And it's the first- They sent you a cease and desist letter. Time in my career where- Jordan has ever called me and was just like, it's not even a fight, Tenny, you can't post it. If you want to get sued for millions of dollars, okay, but like, I'm not going to court with you. You know what I mean? Like, it was just like a, like a, you can't do this. And I spent like three weeks editing this fucking long ass video. And it was just like everything I was feeling, but also a great story time. And like all of the shit feelings I was feeling towards myself too, for like not uploading story times and like was all... Please help. I'm gonna be like alleviated with this like one big video story time fucking moment movie was posting it the next day. They reach out to me and they're like, hey, you want to get sued for a million dollars? And I'm like, nope, because I just wrote the government a check for quintuple that. <laughs> so. What? I can't afford. Was that? I, I don't even. Was that bragging? Was it just being an idiot? Or to get sued like that. And even if I could, it would be really dumb of me to do that. So I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But I'm sad because now I just feel like I might not ever be able to tell that story and it's crazy. You know what? These, um, these tangents are longer than my tangents. These usually, my tangents only take like two to three minutes. This bitch has a five minute and 14 second tangent. But obviously I also have a lot more stories where that came from, so I'll show that. But basically after this happened, it was like two steps forward, seven steps back. It really put me back. And so I kind of to myself was like, yes, I could sit down and tell another like old story, but I feel like my mind is so stuck on like this one old story that's so great that like nothing could ever top it. I would just like hate myself more. This is dark. Is this a cry for help? I sat- Mm, basic bitch humor. Back and I said to myself, I'm going to wait for the next story time worthy thing to happen to me. I'm not going to talk about it online. I'm going to film it fresh. So it's like, because I feel like that's what also made a lot of my story times good. But I feel like stalker shit. And Bad. I'm like uber shit. Really hate it because it was like a fresh ass story that I could like come to you with the emotion. So I was like, I'm going to wait for some... Said no one have ever, uh, oh man. Something fucked up to happen to me, and I'm gonna sit down, and I'm gonna film it, and I'm just gonna fucking put the video on, I'm gonna shut the fuck up, I'm gonna stop being a baby back bitch, and now, three days later, something fucked up happened to me. <laughs> of course it did, because you live that crazy life of, Jesus. Because I have really bad luck, and I'm going to tell you a story about it today. And it's funny, because I'm sitting here right now, like, laughing, but I'm actually really shaken up from this, and just have, like... Uh-huh, you're so shaken up, you're laughing. A breakdown to Amari about it. No, I get it. Humor can be a good cure, but seriously... Mm. It's actually a really scary story. <laughs> uh, like, my whole life. Uh, I don't really know what to make of it. I'm going to do my best to be... As not over dramatic as possible. Yes, which is why I'm going. I'm just gonna. Which is why I'm gonna say. Here, here's the um, here's the thumbnail. I'm not capitalized. Was almost killed in all caps. Leaving Bella's house last night. Dot 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 dot. A story time. 
and I'm just gonna tell it like it happened. <laughs> I'm also going to the Pornhub Awards in like five hours. Oh, Jesus. God, no. I'm not, I'm not doing research on that. Please don't ask me to. I have so much shit to do and shouldn't be doing this right now, but this just happened to me, and I'm really trying to hit you with that, like, fresh-ass emotion. I'm just gonna get into it. This was a long intro. Hi, Tana. Long intro, say. Uh-huh. In fact, it was, uh, six minutes, 52, uh, seconds. Yeah. It, like, is anyone home, stupid ho? Can't you make it a seven minute intro? Uh, subscribe. Oh, seven minutes in. I watch seven minutes of a side tangent. That's about it. Now I'm just gonna hop into the video. I'm gonna hop into the story. This one's uncomfortable. So these past seven minutes and six seconds. Two days I've been celebrating my ex girlfriend Bella's birthday. Um, yeah, we're cool now. Things you have an ex girlfriend? The hell? Okay, if you're if you've watched my last video, she was dating Jake Paul. You know what? Don't understand. Not gonna ask. Not gonna do anything. Just gonna oh, leave. Things are great. It. Celebrating your ex's birthday—that's the thing you do, right? Um, and what I love about celebrating Bella's birthday is it always is like a week long. This is our third birthday. I was going to say together, but people will take that out of context. I mean, this is, I'm spending her th the third birthday with her. And it's always just that one week of the year where you block off the whole week and every fucking day is dedicated to celebrating her birthday in the most extreme. Nobody cares. Shabby way and low-key dope as fuck. She honestly inspired me to make turning 21 like a week, a month, a <laughs> month long. She is dope as fuck to be like, bitch, it's my day. And so two nights ago. Bitch, it's your month. Actually, bitch, it's your millennium. Of cringe. Me checking the calendar LAMO. Today's Friday. This was Wednesday night. So two nights ago, I didn't sleep last. Oh my god. I don't really. No, you've been celebrating. <clears throat> Must have been you were so high. Um, from taking your medical marijuana. Bella's birthday for like two nights now. I'm like, it's also one of her 17 assistants' birthdays. Just A-list celebrity things. And so he has like this birthday dinner. A-list celebrity things. Don't know who the hell Bella is. Mmm, merch. Uh, mm, more merch. Um, coming to Paul. A prank. Nope. It's at this weird ass place where people are fucking sticking nails in their noses and like deep throating balloons and like lighting their tits on fire and like crazy shit. Afterwards, Bella's like, Sounds like a fire hazard. Okay, I'm going back to my house. You guys can come if you want. Let's all just drink or hang out or like do whatever. And so I used to be at Bella's house like every single day. She used to live like five minutes from me. And then, and then like six months ago, she moved to but fuck Egypt. It is so fucking far from my house. It is such a far drive. It's such a weird, tedious drive. And then she lives like, me like trying not to expose her address so I don't get like an angry text from my ex like in fucking two hours. And then she just lives like so, so, so far in the hills that literally 85% of Ubers that you take to her house will stop at the bottom of the hill and be like, it's not worth it for me to go up. I don't want to make the money. Get out here. <laughs> like think about how deep in the hills you have to live for Uber drivers to be like, it's not worth the money to go up into the hills right now. Like get out and walk. Like you have to order the most expensive Uber to get them to take you up to her fucking house. And it's like so secure and just like 19 gates and like halfway up the drive to your house you lose service gates are not secure because it's so far in the hills it's just it's such a mission that's actually people all the time are like why don't you see bella as much anymore and i would see her so much more frequently if she just lived in her previous house and like hunter lives there too charlie lives there too. who the hell is whatever Dude, i see all of them like 80 percent less frequently for the sole reason of how much a mission her house is if that makes sense and obviously she likes it beautiful fucking house she's like bella thorne she's like secluded and like famous and it's like fine like i just what the heck? It's, it's not my cup of tea, you know? The journey to get there. But after this dinner, Bella's like, look, I'm having people over. Just like a few of you guys, like, come drink, come hang, whatever. I haven't seen her in a while. We've been celebrating her birthday for the past few days. 
It doesn't matter. You've already given enough context. It's been so fun. This is also like kind of still her birthday celebration in a way. And like, I'm like, fuck it. Like if at any time I'm going to like make the mission, it's now. I'm already in Hollywood, like far as fuck from my house. Like everyone else is driving back. I don't have to Uber. Like Charlie can drive me, whatever. And so I'm like, fuck it. Let's go to Bella's house. So Amari, our friend Charlie and I all hop in Charlie's car and we start driving there. I'm honestly just like drunk. I don't really think about these things. I'm a very like spur of the moment ass bitch. It's not until we're like 25 five minutes into this car ride. And Amari like sits up from like sleeping because this is like a road trip. Charlie and I are just like talking. I'm not really thinking anything of it. And he's like, how much further is her house? I like look up, I like see the freeway we're at. I'm like, oh, like another 35 minutes. <laughs> and then I look at the clock and it's like 2.30 in the morning. And so we're you should go to sleep. Already on this car ride, what am I gonna do? Have Charlie fucking pull over on the LA 101 and like let me out and I'm gonna Uber? No, I don't like unsafe Ubers. We'll get to that in a moment. I'd already committed. It, but now I was like, fuck, like, this is such a journey. I should have just gone home. And I dragged Amari into this mess with me. But I'm glad I did because later he ended up, like, saving my life. And so now I'm just like... He, like, saved my life. Oh, my God. Like, man, fuck. Like, this is just going to be such a mission. The Uber home is going to be such a mission. It's 2.30. By the time I order an Uber, it's literally going to be, like, 4 in the morning. I'm not going to get home till like, 5.30. Like, this whole scenario just sucks. We pull up to Bella's house. We all drink for a second. It is fun. I'm glad I went. Your life and style. Please don't pick this up. Jesus, God. Up and ruin my week. Finally, everyone starts to get tired. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna order an Uber. So the first Uber is like 18 minutes away. I'm a privileged fucking cunt. I know that's like normal for other places. Honestly, I literally just grew up in Vegas. I live in LA. Ubers are always two minutes away everywhere I go. I just, you know, I don't drive. Uber is all I know. You just go to Yeah, but I realize. Please don't. I just want to go tell you, Tana is a bitch. Just that's that that's what this pause is brought to, uh, brought to you by. Hannah's a bitch. I said I sound like a dumb privilege cunt, so like don't come for me. So I order this first Uber. He drives all the way to the bottom of the hills where she lives. I wait like twelve minutes. Pray for me. <laughs> and then he cancels. I order another Uber. Same thing. Now I'm ordering a Lyft and an Uber at the same time, trying to see which one will get there first. Like, mm, okay, let's go play a game. You have three options. The lift will get there first, the Uber will, or both will cancel. Cancel. Now they're just getting further and further away. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, whatever. Finally, like, four Lyft and Uber orders and cancels in. I get an Uber driver that is, like, willing to go on this journey. He accepts the ride, and he messages me, and he's like, Hey, I'm 18 minutes away. Is that okay? And I was like, Yeah, that's fine. I ended up having to order the nicest Uber possible, which is an Uber black SUV, to even get them to agree to the ride or come up the hill and not cancel, whatever. Every time they were canceling, I was ordering, like, higher, nicer Uber and paying the cancellation fees just to get it. God, please. An Uber to get up to her house because of how much of a journey it is. And so finally, this driver agrees. He messages me. I go in the Lyft app and I cancel a Lyft that I was trying to order at the same time. Or so I think I do. I'll get into that in a moment. I'm such a good storyteller. We love a good foreshadow. Then I take like... Nobody loves that. Jesus. Nobody loves that. Get another two shots. Also, that's a basic foreshadowing thing or so i think i did it's actually not foreshadowing it's the complete opposite it says okay i i thought i canceled this but i didn't see i'm literally sitting to everyone venting about how annoying it is to get an uber to come to bella's house and like how it's just creepy every time too because like you're in the middle of nowhere. There's all these crazy fucking turns. It's just a journey and it's a very scary car ride. It's a car ride I won't take alone. That's another reason that I literally like won't go there if I know I have to like Uber home alone at night because it's so scary. Obviously in the daytime, it's like fine. Like, I'm not going to Uber home alone because it's like, it's just too sketchy. It's too fucking lovely bones fucking murder. I'm going to say lovely bones a lot really soon. So if you haven't seen that movie... <sighs> Another 20 minutes go by. I'm texting the Uber this whole time. I get him through all the gates. And so finally, the Uber pulls up outside. It's a nice-ass Suburban. It's the nicest kind of Uber you can order. I'm like, me just profiling the car off, being nice that the car ride's gonna be safe. I'm such a piece of shit. But I'm like, oh, it's a nice car. Like, um, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Everything's gonna be fine. I start approaching the car, and he has the window rolled down. And he's just like, 
Did you order this Uber? And it's instantly like the creepiest bone chilling. I literally have, I literally have goosebumps right now. Like, then, okay. you, then she holds her forearm up to the camera and nobody can see it. You get it. Well, I literally just got them again. I hate this. Stop, Jesus. Who the hell is your editor? Sorry, I'm actually getting so freaked out. In the last probably like six months at least, maybe a year, it is the most bone chilling voice I've heard in a long time. And he's like, What about items? Did you order this Uber? And Amari and I both are walking up to the car. We stop in our tracks and it's so weird. And Bella's best friend was at her house and she actually like walked Amari and I out. And so she was standing in the driveway witnessing this happen. I stop and I'm like, yeah, why? And he's like, oh, no reason. And I'm like, okay. I just open the door and I'm about to get in the car and Amari's walking around like getting inside. And I'm like, so how are you tonight? And I'm always like very overly nice, like ass kissy, ass sucky, like suck the fucking fart out of your ass nice. Like way too- Jesus Christ nice way too nice for an uber interaction nice to uber drivers because i've had so many bad uber experiences that like i have like ptsd from them literally just like i get in every uber even if i'm with people like if she has ptsd johnny <laughs> johnny johnny no why come on johnny you're gonna live automatically kind of afraid so i'm always just like how are you like how's your night like thank you so much for picking us up like don't worry i'm gonna leave a tip in the app like five stars for you automatically i literally say all of this like getting into an uber because i'm like afraid which also i realize now kind of lets off the like i'm afraid but like what else are you gonna do i don't know i'm just a little girl i'm like how are you oh my god this is almost as noxious as my editing which is none are you and i'm getting into the car and he goes Bad. His voice, think like six foot tall, like white, like school teacher, but like murderer, rapist on the side, white, like I have big glasses, like voice, you know? And he's like, bad. Everything in my body was like, stop. And so I literally just stop in my tracks and I get out of the car. And so Bella's best friend is still watching this from the driveway. And I'm like, why? Like, what's wrong? And he's like, you ordered another Uber. But I'm still not looking at him. I don't know why I didn't look at him. I was like looking like at the car, like not looking at his face, looking behind him, like, which is dumb now. And so I'm like, oh, why? And he's like, you ordered another Uber. And then I realized in my head instantly that the lift I ordered like 25 minutes ago and thought I canceled clearly didn't cancel because obviously there's no other Uber up here. Like Bella's going to bed. Like her best friend's going to bed. Like I know I fucked up my fucking bad. But instantly I'm so afraid of this man's anger that I, like my instinct is to like diffuse it. Does that make sense? And so what do you do when you're trying to diffuse a man's anger? You lie. <laughs> I'm kidding. That would be a really bad clip for my future breakup videos right and i go oh that's our friend's uber like just because like i wanted him to be less angry like his bad it was so angry and scary that i was like trying to diffuse it but nobody cares if you're having to do this with an uber just don't get in the car even that conversation in a regular i have chills literally i have like this all over my body in a shut up stop doing the editing i Mm, I need a gun. Regular Uber. Like, if, if I ordered this Uber to my house, like, and I had this conversation with the Uber, and they were, like, that rude and fucking weird off the bat, I would just cancel it. I would literally just be like, you know what, never mind, thanks for I'd cancel it and go back inside. But Bella's house is in fucking Egypt. It's 4.30 in the morning. This is a nice black SUV that I, like, ordered. Like, I waited 20 minutes for it. Five other ones canceled. Like, now I wanted the gate that I have to, like, deal with and figure out. Like, every complaint I make in this is so fucking first world. I'm sitting here and editing me. Oh, like, did you have another lift at the gate? Like, your life is so hard. Did you have another black SUV? Exactly. Be at Bella Thorne's house that you couldn't- Wait, wait, she's editing this? Figure out how to cancel. Without this Uber driver knowing, too, because, like, what if he kills me? Like, whatever, like, but everything- Jesus. In my head was like, get out of the car, get out of the car, get out of the car, get out of the car. And so just to be safe before I get in the car- <laughs> I step back and I look at the license plate. Biggest tip. Biggest tip, biggest tip, biggest tip. Always check your Uber's license plate. Normally for me, whenever an Uber's license plate is wrong, I will never get in it. If it's not the license plate on the Uber app, I cancel it right then and there, no matter what. No matter what. Well, I'm actually getting really angry at myself as I tell this story because I'm a fucking idiot. I look back at the license plate and I realize it's not the same as the app. And I walk back around in the car and I'm standing at the door and I'm like, 
wait, but your license plate isn't the same. And I kind of say this with attitude because he was being like rude as fuck to me. And we were like in this like conversation where we both were, you were being passive aggressive. We're making like statements with like sentences. Like, you know what I mean? So how are you coming at me? First of all, for like an Uber app lift malfunction when like you're a driving living malfunction. Like you, what you're doing is illegal and fucked up, whatever. And no, it's not. And you could tell that me asking him that his license plate was fucked up, like, caught him off guard because his voice changed, like, a lot. And he was just like, that it was like, oh, yeah, it should be fine. As soon as he says it should be fine, Bella's best friend hears this conversation happen, and she walks down from the driveway, and she starts walking towards the car, and she goes, is everything good? At this point, we've been standing outside of this Uber, too, like, brutally dialecting with this man for, like, ten fucking minutes. And now I'm also realizing I could have literally just got in the other lift, but there's something about it was so angry and scary that I felt like if I like canceled he would be like even angrier with me yeah what he can do abduct you with many witnesses and a person in a car that he then have to chase down and kill yeah Mm -hmm, definitely. Which I realize is like a dumb thing to do. I mean, at this point, we all know that every story time I tell is literally just so nobody lives in my footsteps. Like, just learn from this. And so then she was like, is everything good? And then he, he responds to her and is like, yeah, the drive up here was just insane. Like, I, it was just like such a hard drive. Like, whatever, responds to her. And then before we can even speak, turns his head back to Amari and I, and he goes, get in the car. And I don't know I mean, I guess I do know why I was such a little bitch, though. I felt like this lift was going to cancel, and I needed to figure that out. And it's not even like I could, like, I already lied to this man and told him that, like, it's our friends. He's now been waiting here for 10 minutes. I know that every minute he waits longer, he's going to get angrier. And I know that, like, he's already angry for all of these other reasons, and I'm just scared. And I don't want to go back and And I'm a basic bitch. Side of Bella's at 4.45 in the morning while she's like upstairs in bed with her boyfriend and then wait another 30 minutes for another Uber. You have an ex-girlfriend that that is dating or okay so you have an ex-girlfriend that's dating a man and you have an ex-girlfriend that and you're dating, dating Jake Paul. Uber and like also if I request an Uber black SUV again it's probably gonna be him like it just like it was such a mess that I was like he just like get in the car and I just like listened because I was like it was just so frustrating it was such a frustrating situation and I just like wanted to be home you know this story's long I'm, I'm realizing as I'm telling it we get in this car and we're driving Bitch. literally just out of Bella's house for like two minutes and then Amari turns to him and is like can I have the aux cord can I please play some music which, first of all, this is like an hour car ride. Second of all, and like all Uber Blacks have aux cord, so it's not like this is like a weird thing to like ask. I sound like such a fucking privilege. Yeah, you do. Actually, you really do. Ah, could you just not say it anymore? That'd be nice. Rap, but like I'm just giving you like context. And so the guy's like, sure. You're giving us 20 minutes of it. So he hands Amari the aux cord. Amari plugs it in and he presses play and the volume's at like one and you can't really hear the song. Amari asks him, hey, can you please turn the volume up just a little bit? Thank you. And as Amari's saying this, I'm literally being like, please, thank you so much, sir. We're so sorry for inconveniencing you the whole time. The whole time they've had any conversation about this fucking cord at all. I'm like, I'm so sorry, sir. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Quay. For the inconvenience. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Like, I'm just sucking fart. So I'm getting fucking murdered. I'm ahead of myself. I'll chill. He... I'm gonna say, around halfway through, this is clickbait. Just... He whips his head back to Amari, and in that same, like, lovely bones, like, beginning fucking voice, is like... I heard you the first time. And Amari is a hard-ass motherfucker. I've seen Amari pop off on people 17 times. Please stop. Just stop. This size. I've seen Amari pop off on groups of people. Like, I'll fight all of you right now! These hands my sexual! Like, I literally seen these hands bicep jesus amari me thinking of all the illegal shit amari has done oh did you just admit that amari has done things so if he gets caught uh the other lawyer could uh show this image right here uh oh um i think we just found uh uh our first bit of evidence and knock his ass out. He doesn't back down ever. And Amari goes, oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I literally just got chills again. Me in editing annoyed of myself saying I have chills over an hour. I've never seen...
and Amari do that in my entire life. And Amari's like my brother. Like when Amari feels an Jesus. emotion, I literally feel like I feel it. Like the way like twins telepathy. Please help. Telepathy. The telepathy. <laughs> Just say telepathy. It's not that hard. Like Amari being scared, like me watching my brother like be like visibly scared, like that like made me like so much more scared, if that makes sense. Obviously, again, I'm mean, like, I'm so sorry. We just like he just like couldn't hear the song. Like it's totally fine. Like you can pause it if you want. Like you don't have to play the music. Like it, it's fine. Like we're so sorry. Like we can unplug it. Like whatever you want. Like I'm instantly sucking fart again. And then he just like takes his hand and like turns up the volume like loud as fuck. Keep in mind also, we're driving through like the forest. Like there's the forest. No street lights. It's basically like dirt roads, honestly. It's pitch black. And now it's just loud ass music and he's driving. And so yeah. Sorry for that rude introduction. We'll be back to our daily cringe after this non-sponsored ad. Do you want the smoothest buttery skin ever? You do? Okay, let's get back to the video. Okay, here's the cringe again. And so now we're sitting there with this loud ass music, and of course Amari's ass is playing like, if I die young, bury me in satin. And then I'm just sitting like, if I fucking die right now, and then now I'm sitting- If I get copyrighted right now, I, I swear to- Swear. Sitting there in my head, like having a moment to be like, damn, Tana, like you're an idiot. You should have never gotten in this car. Damn, Ev uh, damn, idiot. You should have never made this video. <sighs> Jesus. I can't do this anymore. You know better than this. You've been through this shit a thousand times. You're in the middle of the fucking forest. What is this I'm silence? So I think she might actually have PTSD. I mean, like she actually said before. I mean, she might. I mean, I wouldn't. Now back yeah, to I actually... our regularly scheduled content. Okay, back to the video. I think about it. It's a different license way. What are you doing? And then I get a message from Bella's best friend being like, are you okay? That's the scariest interaction I've ever seen someone have with an Uber driver. And the second I get that text, I lose cell phone service. Mm. <sighs> Another minute goes- It's almost like this is fake. Now I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's a ton of series of coincidences that all just line up perfectly. Bye. I get like 4G back, but I'm like still not really chilling. Like 4G back? Oh my god. As you said before, mm, you're so privileged. Uber turns down the music. He pulls up to like a three-way stop. Three-way stops literally don't exist. Like if you're pulling up, that means like you're at a four-way stop. In like a dirt road. He stops and he looks at- No, three-way stops can exist. Uh, let's say you have two exits, all of them stop. In the mirror, and I'm still not looking at him. I'm like afraid to even look at him. That's how scared I am. In this lovely bones ass voice is like- You, you sound like an idiot. So let's continue. Is like, do you guys know if I go? But it's like, do I can't even do it. Like I'm not a fucking white, old, scary, rapist man. Do you guys know if I go straight, right, or left? And I'm like, Huh? That's a three-way turn. You just contradicted yourself in your own video. And like, I'm a directionally actually no, that's four. Challenge ass bitch. Like, I have trouble getting to my house like two streets over. I literally map to my house two streets over frequently. And like, I've only been to Bella's new house probably like fifteen times. It's kind of a lot of times, <laughs> but like, it's pitch black. We're at a dirt road with like a million different ways. You, you're in the hills. A dirt road. You know, some things are not adding up. To go. And I'm like, I don't know, sir. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Just give me a second. I can try to figure it out. I can try to map. And so I'm trying to map it on my phone. And my service isn't loading. And he's like, Weird how there's no service, huh? Yeah, that's kind of creepy. But then you do this odd facial expression. <laughs> and it kind of looks like you're a murderer. Just seeing something. And like, I... I could have gotten out and ran, but like, it would have been like a 30 minute hike to Bella's. I don't know how to get there. We're in the middle of the forest. I have no cell phone. You'd also probably uh, die from not having internet connection. On service, like. 
And so then Amari is like clearly freaked out as well, like pauses the music and is like, um, I, I think it's left. And then he goes right. I just farted. Please, you do not need to point that out. I just farted. He goes right. Imagine. <sighs> Please stop that. I, I don't know how anybody can think that is good. You're in this car with this lovely Bones ass, like, dominating. He's, like, so tall, too, that he's, like, taller than the driver's seat. So you just see his, like, white man, like, shoulders, but I have no idea what his face looks like. In the middle of the fucking forest with no cell phone service, like, he could have easily killed us there and, like, got... Yeah. ...in a way with it. God. Sometimes I, um... I kind of want that to happen. Away with it. And so he goes right. He eventually, like, drives further down the hill, and we get cell phone service back. I start texting one of my best friends, and he's being like, as soon as you're down the street, like, as soon as you're on the street, like, get out of the car. Like, what are you doing? This is so dumb. You're so unsafe. Get out of the car. Like, yeah. You just named a bunch of random things. You know what? Let's just go continue on this perilous journey. Like, the second you see, like, a CVS or a gas station or a restaurant, like, go there, order another Uber. Like, I secretly start mapping to my house because I'm, like, I should at least get directions toward, like, civilization. But also, my, my phone's at, like, fucking 15%. I don't have a portable charger. There's no... As you said, first world problems. No fucking iPhone chargers. And I'm low-key sitting there, like, freaking the fuck out. Like, having a full-blown panic attack. And then... A full-blown panic attack. And he's just, yeah. like, oh, Jesus. Mm. Service came back. And like blares the music. So now I'm sitting there again, loud ass music. Like this man's gonna fucking kill me. But I'm mapping and I'm looking at the map. From where Bella lives, you, you could go to Calabasas or you could go back towards like Hollywood. Jesus Christ, nobody cares. Like the valley, like Sherman Oaks, like the rest of LA this way or like. Nobody cares. Back like to that. things I should be doing. Like higher up into like richer LA, like Malibu, like and so obviously like I'm gonna go back like down to Malibu. Like, the <laughs> and I realize in my maps it just keeps rerouting and rerouting and rerouting. And I realize he's like driving toward Calabasas. And there's no way to go to my house from Calabasas. Like he is driving like further from my house. And so I'm like, this makes no sense. Like if he was gonna kill us, like he would just fucking do it. Why is he gonna drive like super far away? Like, like maybe he's just going like a weird way. But then I realize we're just getting deeper and deeper and deeper into into Calabasas to the point that I'm like, oh my god, I'm five minutes from Jake's house. Should I just go there? Being it has boxing in like an hour. And I'm so scared. But Calabasas also is like old rich people who go to bed at 7 p.m. So the streets are dead. The street lights are off. It's pitch black. There's nowhere we could get an Uber. It would take long as fuck again. It would just doesn't matter. be him. Why would I ask him to drop us off on a street corner? Like then he's gonna know I'm afraid of him. Like I need an excuse, like whatever. So are you gonna say he's gonna kidnap you? And then I realize he's driving down the road and he keeps missing freeway exits. And the roads are dead. It's like Mmm, very suspicious. So, what happens next, you may be asking? There's like traffic, like he's purposely missing them. I realize he missed the first one and I'm like, damn, that was probably a mistake, like whatever. And so then I like peer over into like his front seat and I'm looking at his phone and I see that he is like fully looking at the directions, ignoring them, like seeing that it's telling him to like get on this freeway and just keeps driving. And now I'm like, I get it. Like some people like know their way around, like they go a different way other than the maps, but like there's no other way back to my house than like getting on this like freeway. And he's just missing it and missing it and missing it and driving deeper and deeper into like butt fuck like calabasas like nobody cares you've already told us this nowhere but there's no gas stations there's no nothing now my mm. other best friend's still like blowing me up being like get out of the car the first thing you see get out of the car like what are you doing just get out of the car i look up to the front seat one more time and i see that he's driving with his elbows and using a cloth to clean like a little like travel size spray bottle and i'm very ooh, that sounds suspicious Almost like it's 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 some secret poison made by the CIA to kill Russian assets. Zero to one hundred. So I'm just like chloroform, chloroform. That's chloroform. You're gonna fucking kill me. Have you seen the movie Split? I don't know. Chloroform. Okay, it's time to research chloroform. FBI agent, please, please. No, this is for a video. So what happened next? If you guys have ever seen the movie Split, but the scene in the movie Split fucked me up for life. The story gets so much worse. This is oh yeah, also I was supposed to go be researching chloroform. It's a dense liquid, meaning it would, um, 
it would kind of be like squirting honey. Not going to work out by, very well. By the way, today's sponsor, I have no sponsors. So, it's more likely just to be like window cleaner, blind you, um, cyanide, uh, nerve agents, botulinum, whatever. is not even like literally like the half of it. I'm instantly like chloroform, 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 that's chloroform. When things are just like creepy too, I'm always in my own head. Like, you're being- o You're being over- yeah, because you are. Over dramatic. Oh, also, would you say again? You were trying- you were trying not to be overdramatic. Mm. Mm. But with that, this is going to be the end of this video because it's getting too long.